Tea Talks. Peace YouTube family, it's your girl T, nappy headed jojoba, not nappy, not jojoba, nappy headed jojoba. You have to say the whole thing, it's like ghost town DJs and men are emotional, have you noticed? That's not a drag. I'm just trying to figure out how it got to be that women pretty exclusively get characterized as emotional, irrational, hysterical. And you don't have to take my word for it. Let's look at the actual word hysterical as defined by the Oxford Dictionary, since I know a lot of folks will consider that a far more reputable source than they ought to. Oxford defines hysterical as in a state of extreme excitement and crying, laughing, etc., in an uncontrolled way. And then they list usage examples like hysterical screams, a hysterical giggle. He became almost hysterical when I told him. Let's not get hysterical, parentheses, disapproving. He thought I was being a hysterical female. Yes, Oxford's Dictionary really says this right now in 2023 AD. That is a fresh screenshot from their site. But we can revisit why we need to stop giving credence to any of these decrepit ivory tower institutions on another day and get back to the trope of the hysterical woman. If you are surprised by the gender derisive nature of some of these uses of hysterical, it's all in the etymology. The root word in hysterical comes from the same root used in hysterectomy. Hystera, which is the ancient Greek word for uterus or womb. Never knew I'd be calling back to shit I learned in my high school ancient Greek class at this big age, but shout out to Mr. Russo and the New York Board of Ed. Anyway, hysterical lightweight kind of translates to womb crazy. Like, having a uterus automatically means having unregulated emotions. As Oxford says, a hysterical female, since obviously females are more emotional than males, which is a proven fact, as long as we literally ignore everything that is happening around us. I'm not suggesting that we definitively say that one sex is more emotional than the other and that it's high time we designated males as the ones who are too sensitive. I'm rejecting the idea that men are any less emotional than women in the first place. Feeling emotions is a natural, healthy part of just being a person. I reiterate, to call men emotional isn't a drag because being emotional is not a shortcoming in and of itself. The problem is when you condition an entire gender to transmute all of their not good emotions into rage. Male rage is getting louder now that there's a convenient place to put it. I'm talking about the maleosphere. I'm not gonna call it the manosphere because ain't no men in that mess. Pretty much every day there's a new men need to do this and women need to do that argument going down. I don't even have to do any internet scrolling right now to see what the specifics are for the gender war du jour because it's more or less the same tired conversations over and over about guys who wanna go 50-50 or women being gold diggers, yada. The racialized gender war of black men versus black women is the particular facet of the larger gender war that I am best acquainted with and deal with the most for obvious reasons. Speaking specifically of this issue of men being extremely, very, really quite emotional though, I'm keeping things pretty macro level today. I'm also working on a talk specifically dealing with relentlessly adversarial discourse between black women and black men in these internet streets. If you wanna hear that, I'll be putting it up on my Patreon and on my locals or I don't know when you're watching this, so it might already be up, so check me out on those platforms. Anyway, one thing that Red Pill, the maleosphere, all that, one thing that has been made abundantly clear is that these males will find a reason to be upset with women. I'm starting to think that there's a very real epidemic, and it is an epidemic of emasculation. These males are emasculated by wives or girlfriends who out-earn them, emasculated by women more educated than they are, emasculated because a woman rejected him when he tried to step to her. Here's the thing about emasculation though. A man being emasculated honestly has nothing to do with how a woman feels about him and has everything to do with how he feels about himself. In other words, this is a you problem, sir. Until it isn't. Because as I said at the top, males are socialized to transmute pretty much every negative emotion they have into anger, which makes it our problem as women who want to, you know, live it ain't fair or correct, it's just true. Women have to constantly make judgments and assessments about males' feelings just to keep ourselves safe. All damn day, every damn day. Not just in real life interactions, but online too, since that's one of the first dumping grounds for the vitriol of unhappy males. And staying safe online is more important than it ever has been, which is why I wanna put y'all on to today's sponsor, Aura. If you've ever Googled yourself, then you already know how scary it feels to discover how much of your personal information is already out there. When I saw what came up about me and my family on public sites, I knew it was time to take control of my online privacy in a real way. Data is massive business, and 
companies are making a Q coin selling your address, phone number, and other information that can be even more invasive. Aura can find the data broker selling your personal information and submit opt-out requests on your behalf, which these brokers have to comply with by law, by the way. So why not just let Aura do the legwork and have one less thing to worry about? Hit up my link to get two free weeks to try Aura and start protecting your information. With Aura, you get a VPN, antivirus protection, parental controls, password management, and identity theft insurance. And it saves money since you're getting all these protections in one place. If you're ready to do something about the data parasites profiting off of selling your entire internet life away, head to my link. It is also linked in the D-Box and start your 14-day free trial. I talked about this in a live earlier in the month, but the amount of walking on eggshells women have to do in everyday situations where we have to somehow de-escalate a male potentially getting angry and therefore potentially getting violent, even though he's the one out of pocket, literally stalking you, following you, demanding access to you, demanding attention. This isn't normal behavior, but sadly it's somewhat normalized. A lot of these red pill guys are profoundly unhappy and unhappy people are dangerous. The line between online life and real life is so blurred at this point, we can no longer dismiss the maleosphere as just a handful of angry but mostly harmless incels in their mom's basements. I think I said maybe a couple years ago that these males got podcasts when what they should have got was therapy. Even though I was lightweight joking at that time, the real world consequences of males directing all of their frustrations and rage at women are realer than real. We are in what seems to be an especially bleak time for romantic partnership and relationships. We got red pill, incels, and blin cells, and fem cells, oh my. At this point, it's actually a bitter irony that incels originate from an online community started by a Canadian woman. She started this website back in the 90s called Alana's Involuntary Celibacy Project, which was all about her dating struggles and her coping with hurtful, lonely virgin jokes. It was about her connecting with other people who had similar experiences, and they started calling themselves Invcells, short for involuntary celibates. Obviously, Invcell doesn't quite roll off the tongue the same way, but long story short, the Invcell support community, which was rooted in uplift and personal growth, it got the typical male imperialist treatment to become the violent, rage filled incel community of today. So, even though the idea of an involuntary celibate community to combat loneliness and yearning for romantic partnership can be credited to a woman, the incels of today certainly don't appreciate that irony. In her book, Men Who Hate Women, Laura Bates writes, incel logic dictates that it is almost impossible for a woman to be an incel, which has led to today's incel communities being almost entirely male dominated. That the term was invented by a bisexual woman is a sad reminder of how ludicrously narrow subsequent incel beliefs have become. So even though there are women who struggle with loneliness, self-esteem, and romantic partnership to the same degrees as incel men, the term femcel had to come about to describe such women. And the distinction is really needed since so-called femcels generally don't, you know, fantasize about people or becoming mass sh**s. Again, from Laura Bates. One man wrote on an incel forum about the apparently banal experience of seeing a woman looking over her shoulder at him as he walked behind her at night. You should have raped her, came the immediate response. Another forum member wrote, I enjoy walking behind women in the parking garage after work. The sheer terror gives me a massive reaction. Yet another wrote, all of my sexual fantasies are hostile and predatory in nature now. I only understand sex as being a form of violence. Fantasizing about the graphic details of the attacks they want to enact on message boards is bad enough, but we're now seeing what it looks like when these males actually carry them out in real life. Masters are not only frequently nationalists, they are also often incels. I'd honestly be afraid to see the Venn diagram overlap. While pretending that what threatens these boys is women or immigrants or non-white men, the real threat comes from the very forms of rigid manhood their so-called saviors are desperate to preserve and promote. Up until relatively recently in history, and I argue that this is still the case today if I'm being honest, many women partner to survive. I'm not talking about pygmies who stay with their ancient just to be able to say, at least I got a man. Or even who stay in relationships for a financial come up. I'm talking about the reality that many women stay in otherwise unfulfilling, if not outright unhealthy relationships with men, simply because it affords them some protection. Protection from what? 
Other men, of course. I know I'm guilty of this. I mean, not the staying in an unhealthy relationship part. That part of my life is behind me. But I certainly feel way more safe being partnered because the block is hot. I do think there's a direct relationship between late stage capitalism and the heightened tenor of the gender wars we're seeing in public discourse, which is maybe a good topic for another video. Spoiler, I guess, my basic thought is that these male sphere hoes is mad because their lives weren't supposed to look like this. Patriarchy meant the game was supposed to be rigged for them, right? And yet here they are, broke and unloved. It's getting harder and harder just to make it in the rat race, and rather than direct their rage where it belongs, at an amoral, capitalistic, death-profiteering ruling class that thrives on mass suffering, these males are in a confirmation by a circle jerk that the real problem is... Feminism? Speaking of feminists, in The Will to Change by Bell Hooks, she wrote, Many men are angry at women, but more profoundly, women are the targets for displaced male rage at the failure of patriarchy to make good on its promise of fulfillment, especially endless sexual fulfillment. Males are conditioned to feel entitled to women, entitled to our attention, entitled to our bodies, entitled to our lives. And they respond with anger when they are denied what they feel is their birthright. Which... Another irony, this becomes self-fulfilling because for a male to reach a point of being an involuntary celibate, an incel, surely any reasonable person would look inward to see what it is about him and how he moves that's making women head for Z Hills and how maybe he can improve. Any reasonable person would then also have, you know, a will to change, get it, you get it, in order to improve. But these are, of course, not reasonable people. So when the incels are continuously rejected for being creepy and maladjusted, of course it's because there's something wrong, oh, not with them, but with women. They're gold diggers, tramps, strumpets, slores. A six at best, let the rejected incel tell it. Which further elucidates the mental illness at play, because why would an incel be pressed that a s rejected him. Surely only the most virginal tens are worthy of their disused scrote and ween after all, right? Right? In her foreword to Sula, Toni Morrison wrote, female freedom always means sexual freedom, even when, especially when, it is seen through the prism of economic freedom. Insecure males who themselves bring nothing to the table other than a f fork, hate nothing more than a woman outshining them both financially and sexually. They are truly pressed about gold digging s Because I don't think that most of these red pill podcasters have even thought about what freedom is really and what freedom might mean for women. They haven't sat down to ponder it and define it. If I'm being real, I'm not sure that a lot of women necessarily have even thought about this since it seems like city girls culture has a lot of people thinking that our freedom and equality just means pink patriarchy, i.e. acting, like men, or at least how men are expected to act through boundless promiscuity, emotional detachment, and superficiality. But, and let's go back to Laura Bates again, things become clearer when viewed through the lens of the most basic incel belief. At its simplest, the argument goes like this. If women's sexual autonomy has given them wicked and tyrannical control over men's lives, then women's liberation is at the root of all male suffering. When you feel defensive, the first place you want to run to is somewhere you'll be told it's not your fault. The manosphere goes one step further. It subverts the narrative of the privilege and the victim altogether. It tells men they are suffering and it blames women. Whereas straight women don't seem to harbor the same feelings of being entitled to men even when they do desire them. If anything, women seem to turn those feelings of loneliness and disappointment inward, often viewing them more as personal failures. Which tracks because James Brown been told us that it's a man's world and this is how girls and women are socialized too. Anger itself is quite gendered and viewed as masculine. Why do you think all the femininity girlies are telling y'all weird shit like feminine women don't listen to hip hop because it's aggressive. Girl, patriarchy both creates the rage in boys and then contains it for later use, making it a resource to exploit later on as boys become men. This rage can be garnered to further imperialism, hatred, and oppression of women and men globally. Time and time again, we have been told that civilization cannot survive men's loving, for if men love, they will not be able to kill on command. However, if men were natural born killers, hardwired by biology and destiny to take life, then there would be no need for patriarchal socialization to turn them into killers. This is what I mean when, as I've said in past videos and I say again now, 
patriarchy hurts everyone, including men. And as I've been arguing for the last several minutes, these men's do be emotional. It's not that we need men to stop being emotional. We need men to stop believing this lie that they aren't emotional in the first place. Y'all can't just be passing every yucky feeling you have through the rage filter just so you can maintain this artifice of masculinity that y'all made up. Better put, boys learn to cover up grief with anger. The more troubled the boy, the more intense the mask of indifference. Shutting down emotionally is the best defense when the longing for connection must be denied. Anyway, those are some of my thoughts and concerns with where we're at with the maleosphere, but there's definitely more to discuss beyond this. I'm gonna have to get dialectic up in this bitch because things have definitely gotten significantly more charged than even two or three years ago. And as things develop, so must we, the hysterical females. To speak ill of masculinity, to describe it in its current societal iteration as something problematic, is seen as an attack on men themselves. To question why some men behave in certain ways is viewed as an assault on all men and thus unacceptable. Which is something I am sure y'all will see in the comments section where there may be a few males having rather hysterical reactions to what I'm saying on today. But that's fine, I probably won't even see it. Don't live your life in constant fear because that ain't no way to live. That is the opposite of freedom. But caution, awareness, head on swivel, learn self-defense techniques, get you a taser, some bear mace from the camping store, an 18 inch carbon steel machete, something child, whatever you are into, the block is hot. I know I've mentioned the will to change before, so I've linked it again on not Amazon with all of the books that I cited on today. Also, if you're a bookworm or if you just wanna get back into reading and need some structure and accountability, we do have a book club over on my Patreon and Locals pages, which are always linked. I always say this at the end, but this is perhaps the most apt time I have ever said it. Stay safe and stay dangerous and never trust a person who lacks the will to change. Bah. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs> They're... Shut up.